Hi everyone, this is Ted Bauman of Banyan Hill Publishing, editor of The Bauman Letter. For the last 10 years, we really haven't had a recession, and that's quite remarkable. It's one of the longest periods without any kind of retraction in the economy uh, since, really, records started to be kept back in the 19th century. Now, a recession will come because recessions are built into the very nature of capitalist uh, economics. But the thing is that recessions are not necessarily something to be feared. You can actually make money out of them. As long as you understand the investing strategies that are appropriate at different phases of the economic cycle, or the business cycle as most economists call it. In this presentation today, I'm going to explain to you uh, how you can use the business cycle to uh, identify particular stocks, plain old stocks, that could do very well in the next phase. If you buy them in the previous phase, you're one step ahead of the game and you can set yourself up for profits. Well, let's start with uh, an overview of the, the timelines of different kinds of investment strategies. Now remember that any investment strategy involves allocating investments to different kinds of investments uh, over particular periods of time. But the critical thing about uh, looking at investment from the sub viewpoint of economic cycles is that these things uh, vary across time. There are actually three different timelines uh, that involve different types of allocation. The first one is what an economist would call the secular timeline. That's the timeline um, that governs the rise and fall of big sectors. So for example, we've heard a lot about the Internet of Things uh, in the last couple of years. My colleague Paul Mampilli, for example, uh, invests in that, uh, in that area. But the, the critical thing about that is that you're looking at the development of new technologies uh, and new ideas, new products, and therefore new companies and new investment opportunities over a long time frame. So depending on where you are, um, if you spot an investment opportunity at the bottom uh, of the cycle, in other words, when it's just getting started, something new is coming up, um, then you have a 10 to 30 year time frame to see that uh, technology mature. And if you get in early with the right companies, you can make good money. The, the second phase, and the one I'm gonna be focusing on uh, in today's presentation is the business cycle. And the business cycle is essentially a cycle where you have uh, you, let's start with the end of a recession. You have a recovery from a recession, you have a growth phase, you have a consolidation phase, and then you have uh, a new uh, recessionary period. Now these things tend to happen in cycles, and although we haven't had a recession in 10 years, um, they do tend to follow fairly normal um, uh, patterns. In other words, we can see how these cycles evolve over time. They've happened numerous times uh, over the last century and um, we've been able to develop reasonably strong uh, predictive abilities to say you know, when a recession is coming uh, and what the, the, the consequences will be. In other words, uh, what will likely to happen to different kinds of industries and different kinds of companies and different types of assets during a recessionary cycle. The third uh, cycle for investment is tactical, and that's really when you're moving back and forth between different uh, asset classes based on things like technical analysis. Um, you'll find companies that, for example, um, are poised to do well uh, as a result of a, a potentially good earnings report. So you might invest in a company like that a couple of weeks before the report comes in the hope of seeing that stock pop and then giving you a profit-taking opportunity. Um, so that's not really so much of a cyclical thing. It's more like a, um, you know, a, a tactical investing strategy within these other timelines. Now, the critical thing is that these things uh, are related to each other, um, but they're not, uh, they don't necessarily determine each other. So it's not that the secular, the secular timeline, for example, of a particular industry is going to determine the tactical uh, performance of particular companies within that industry. Uh, but the important thing to understand is that as an investor, you can choose to invest uh, in different ways. You can take the long-term view and invest uh, over a 10 to 20 or th even 30-year timeline like uh, somebody like Warren Buffett does when he buys a, a company like Apple. He's looking into the long term. Or you can look at the business cycle. And that's what I want to look at today because I think that that's going to become an important component of your investment strategy in 2019.
Now let's look first at the, uh, the history of recessions going back to about 1960. Now on this chart, you can see the, uh, the real year-on-year uh, -year change in the output of the economy. Um, that's basically the, uh, the blue line. Uh, and then you can see the grade lines, which are recessions. Now, as you can see, um, a recession is typically uh, a period when the the year-on-year uh, -year change of the growth of the economy uh, measured quarterly uh, is negative. In other words, a recession is defined by two or more quarters of negative GDP growth. Now, as you can see, they're relatively consistent. Um, there have been periods when they're closer together, and there have been periods when they're farther apart. Uh, but the critical thing to understand is that recessions are a normal part of the, uh, of, the of economic life, and they're always there. Um, the idea that we would continue indefinitely without a recession uh, is not really a credible one, simply because, uh, I'm not going to go into it today, but recessions are determined by normal kind of cycles of business activity. Uh, and it's very difficult to stop them simply because they reflect the natural uh, interaction of many, many different players in the economy uh, that by definition cannot be coordinated in a way that would stop the recession. Now, let's look at the typical length of recessions. Well, over time, uh, they varied a lot, um, but I would say the average is about a year. So typically, uh, if, you're, if you get into a recession, uh, you can expect it to last, according to this, anywhere from six months to as many as 18 months, but the average is probably about a year. Uh, but the important thing is not so much uh, the length of the recession, but what happens in the cycles between recessionary periods. And let's look at that. So essentially what you see in a business cycle, and remember that's that a little black line that I showed you on the first slide, the one that's superimposed on top of the secular line, um, is that when a recession happens, and uh, you can see, if you look at the left-hand side of this chart where it says economic growth plus minus, that's taken as the starting point. So <clears throat> what we see is that in the early phase of a, uh, a recovery from a recession, you see a rebound in GDP and in income, et cetera. Um, credit begins to flow again. Profits uh, grow relatively rapidly uh, because companies are coming off of a low baseline. Uh, policy is still you know, trying to um, get the economy going, lots of spending, low taxes. Uh, inventories are low, and because sales are improving, companies have to build up their inv inventories. And all that activity uh, spreads throughout the economy. So companies that are um, providing each other with goods and services uh, so that they can build their stuff that they sell to us, like the auto parts manufacturers selling their parts to auto uh, manufacturers, those guys uh, get more orders, and so they hire more people, and they order more stuff so they can make uh, starters and alternators and all the stuff that they make. So essentially, uh, when a recovery starts, it has a ripple effect that uh, boosts the entire economy. Now, the mid phase of a business cycle, you'll see that uh, things are still going well, right? You, you'll, it still looks like things are in a good position, right? And I would argue that that's where we are right now. We're in the midpoint uh, of uh, the uh, recovery that started really back in, in uh, uh, 2009, uh, but really took off, I think, um, uh, from about uh, 2011. It was really when the recovery really started uh, picking up. Now, if we're in, in the middle of it, it, things still look good. That's the important thing to understand. But uh, at some point, we're going to peak, and then we'll start to decline again. Uh, and that's the big question everybody's asking. Is that going to be in this year? There's a lot of talk about it being in this year. Now, if, it, if we do see the beginning of the end of um, the up cycle of the business cycle, what happens? Well, we see growth slowing. We see credit tightening because uh, banks and other institutions are nervous about lending money uh, when economic activity is slowing down. You find that companies are um, starting to report slower earnings or slower earnings growth. And in fact, that's something that we've already seen. Uh, in the uh, the recent spate of earnings here in January. Um, policy also um, tends to be contractionary. Um, now, that is not necessarily going to happen this time because the folks in Washington don't seem to be prepared to raise taxes or do anything else that would slow down the economy. Um, so I think for our purposes, leave the policy bit out of it. But the key thing is that when companies begin to see growth slowing, 
They begin to see their earnings start starting to slow. They become more cautious about building up inventories in the expectation of sales. So they run a leadership. They, they, they start cutting down on their orders to their suppliers, who then cutting down on their orders to their suppliers. And as you can see, it, it causes that same ripple effect that I spoke about earlier, but in reverse. And that's what makes the economy go into a recession. In a construction period, in a recession, um, you definitely see uh, a, uh, uh, the economic growth goes into negative territory on a quarterly basis. Credit dries up, profit goes down, uh, inventory and sales fall. And then eventually uh, something starts to turn it around again. You know, basically it's like a yo-yo. When it gets down to the bottom, um, the natural tendency of the economy builds it back up. So that's essentially what the business cycle is. But the key thing is that different asset classes perform differently across the business cycle. In the early part of the business cycle, you'll tend to see that stocks do very well. Um, by uh, contrast, uh, in the, um, the middle part of the business cycle, uh, stocks begin to uh, slow down, but they still have positive appreciation. In the late phase, they still have positive appreciation, but it's only, until, it's only in a recessionary period that you actually see a fall in stocks. So knowing where you are in the business cycle is, is key because that'll help you to pre-position yourself uh, to uh, avoid big losses in your portfolio or to make big gains in your portfolio. Bonds tend to perform best in recession. And similarly, cash tends to do well uh, in, in recession or in the late phase of a, a economic cycle. But if you, if you think in those terms, you know, the assets have different performance uh, characteristics based on different parts of this credit cycle that I'm showing you, what does that mean for our strategy? Well, here's my nutshell. The first thing you want to do is to know the typical winners of each phase of the business cycle. To know where you are in the economic part of the, or the, in the business cycle in terms of the, um, uh, you know, are, are you in the beginning? Are you in the mid phase, the late phase or recessionary phase? Look at uh, economic indicators. What's monetary policy doing? Is it tightening? Is it loosening? Is credit still available or, or is it starting to tighten? Are inventory levels increasing or decreasing? Are corporate profits falling or rising? Are unemployment numbers rising or falling? So the critical thing is that um, when you see all this stuff being talked about in the financial press, it's there for a reason. It's because people are trying to figure out where we are in the business cycle. Now, from an investment strategy, one of the easiest things to do is to make sure that you have your assets invested um, or your portfolio invested in a way that can take advantage of uh, assets, whether they're rising or falling. So for example, uh, you might invest in a particular class of companies that does well when the economy is on its way up uh, and hold an equal amount in uh, companies that do well when the economy is going down. The logic being um, that you'll uh, protect yourself from being over uh, committed to one uh, point or another. But from the perspective of the business cycle, the most important thing of all is the last point. Invest one cycle phase ahead. Pre-position your investments to take advantage of where the economy is going to be in the next sector. And this is how uh, the, uh, the history of investment in the United States tends to suggest. You can see, for example, that in, um, the, uh, in a business cycle, in the early and mid phases, certain kinds of assets, certain kinds of companies tend to be strong buy recommendations, financials, industrials, uh, consumer discretionary, technology, etc. cetera. Um, but in the late part of the uh, business cycle, which is where I think we are now, there are, uh, they tend to move in the direction of sell signals. And the reason for that is because the expectation is that they are going to see declines in their stock prices. But other kinds of stocks do well in the late part of a, um, a business cycle heading into a recession. Uh, things like technology, um, energy, uh, telecoms, healthcare, utilities. These are the kinds of stocks that um, you would want to buy if you're expecting a recession in the next 9 to 18 months. Because buying them now at low prices uh, means that when uh, the economy does move into a recession, you will be pre-positioned by owning those shares to benefit from the natural tendency that they have to appreciate during recessionary periods. So really, that is the, the, the theory behind investing according to the business cycle.
Well, that's my brief introduction to investing according to the business cycle. And remember, we haven't had one for a while, but one will come. The critical thing to understand is that the time to be prepared for a downturn is when uh, the economy is still going well. Identify stocks that you'd like to invest in when the economy starts to go down again and pre-position yourself. Know what they are, look for good price points and get ready to buy in the expectation that they will do better when the economy turns. This is Ted Bowman speaking, editor of the Bowman Letter from Banyan Hill Publishing. Thank you.